Greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that is above every other name, at the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee does bow, every tongue confesses, because He, the Lord Jesus Christ, is Lord, and He's over it all. And in Him we live, we move, and we have our being. So, how are you doing out there? <laughs> how, how goes it in the midst of all that takes place on this earth at such a time as this? How um, are you progressing in the journey that God has for you here? Because you were called to go and to progress. You were called to go from glory to glory and from strength to strength. You were called to move forward in in reality, in truth, in that which is real, that which God has destined for you. That was that's your call. That's part of of God's destiny for you while you're here. And um, you know, the enemy of your soul, the devil, does everything that he can to keep you away from your call. He does everything that he can to keep you back and away from your destiny and God's plan and purpose for you. And, you know, so if he can keep you from accessing what is your birthright, if he can keep you from accessing what it is that God has destined for you, if he can keep you in another place because you are the one that that has creative power in you because God's Spirit is in you. So, you know, God, when he set up the earth... And he worked with Adam, you know, Adam and Eve, you know, that he was working with them. And they were given um, dominion. They were given command. You know, and Adam named the animals. You know, it's just like, it's, it's, it was, there was creative power in the first Adam. There's creative power in the last Adam, who is Christ. And if you are in Christ Jesus, and his words are in you, and you have been consummated with the Spirit, then you have that life-giving power of God in you to create. And so, because that's there, what the enemy wants to do is use you to create hell. He wants to use you and co-opt that power in you to create a really nasty, horrible paradigm. Both in your own life, in your own experience while you're here, as well as in the collective experience for those that are around you. So <clears throat> this is why um, you have so much in the way of programming. There's a reason they call it TV programming. It's, it's, it's so much in the way of programming to try to program your consciousness so that you speak um, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, so that you speak and you create and you co-create a hellish reality, whereas God wants you to let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. God once says, if you know, if anything be pure, if anything be lovely, if anything be of noble character, he goes on to all the different things. If it of a good report, think on these things. You know, why think on these things? Because you know, you if you <clears throat> there's a simple principle. And it's in, it's, it's in the book of Proverbs. It says, walk with the wise and you will be wise yourself. And there's another one that says, bad company corrupts good character. Okay. So the simple principle is, wherever you put your, your thoughts, your mind, your intention, your heart, your volition, that is going to impact your outcome, your thought process, the words that you speak, the way that you create. You know, you, if there's two people that can see the exact same situation and depending on the influences that are in their life, one person will see opportunity where another person sees defeat. One person will see a challenge where another person um, throws up their hands and says nothing can be done. So this is, again, the encouragement where, okay, where is your mind? Where is your thought process? Where is your heart? Is it being led by the Spirit? It is, being, is it being quickened by what God shows you? Or is it being structured by the world? Is it being influenced by them? And the world will spare no expense to influence your thought process, to influence your mindset, 
to make you doubt the truth goes all the way back to the very start with Adam and Eve in the garden when the serpent showed up with Eve. Did God really say? Did God really say? <laughs> See, cars outside of green, yes. Um, there they are again. Did God really say was the, the thing that the enemy started to put there. So God had given a command. God had given an instruction. And what was the response of the enemy? Did God really say? Why? To get there to be a seed of doubt. To get there to be a seed of mistrust in what God's intention is for His people. God's instructions are for His people. God's reality for His people. Because the enemy knows the Scriptures too. And that little fly can spoil the ointment. It's the little foxes that destroy the vine. It's that doubt, those weeds that get sown in along with the wheat that choke it and make it unfruitful, whether it's the worries, the riches, or the pleasures of this life, that choke it and make it unfruitful. That is what the enemy wants to bring into your life and into your world. So when God has spoken to you, and you knew it, you knew in your heart what God said to you, and you were going forward in that, he wants you to now doubt. And so he'll he'll bring the adversity. Because in the adversity... Now there's a challenge to the spoken Word of God. Now there's a challenge to the written Word of God. Now there's a challenge to God's Word over your life and what He showed you about you and who you are in this reality. Um, you know, the irony is, is that, okay, there is, there is no time in the sense that, there, that all time exists all the time. God is I am. So there is no time. There is only now. There's only right now. And and in this manifestation of right now, there's also all of these different um, possibilities of where you can be and what reality loop you can be in, depending on where you choose to access, where you choose to move. Because you, brother and sister, you're not bound. You're not bound to the construct of the world by no means. Um, Once you know and understand the keys of the kingdom, you can flow to and fro like the wind, and no one will know where you're going or what you're doing, but you'll be led by the Spirit. And you'll be able to do incredible things. And there's nothing that's off limits to you. Okay, shall I, shall I give you an example? I, some people scratching their heads. Okay, here, for example. Um, you know, we all know the stories of, you know, there's people that were on a certain track in their life. And they were moving a certain way in their life. And then, one day, there was a revelation of Christ Jesus in them. You know, the, the big rock on which... The church of the living God is built. And the revelation that's given by the Father of who Christ is. And a response to the call. And in the follower of Christ, that's what happened. There's a response to the call. Now, in that response, all of a sudden things changed. Now the things of the world grow strangely dim. Now there's another pattern. Now there's another whole different set of possibilities that are there in the life of a person. Now the things that were important to you before are not as important now. Now other things that are important now that weren't important before, right? Okay, so example of that is Peter. You know, he's washing his nets. And God says, Jesus comes and teaches in his boat. And then he says, okay, put out to the water for a catch. We've been laboring all night, Lord. Um, But since you've given the word, sure. Okay, we're going to put out to the water for a catch. And they put out into the water, and what happens? They take such a big catch of fish, that i got to call for another boat to come help them. They bring the, the, the fish in, the nets start to tear because they caught so much fish. And he comes back to land, and he falls on his face before Jesus. He's like, oh, Lord, away from me. I'm a sinful man, you know. I, I, and Jesus says, you know, come follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Now, that is a, a change. That is a, a, a shift. That is somebody that 
took us because he responded to that and went with Christ. And in that response and going with Christ, he steps out of a certain loop that his life was in and goes on a journey with Christ and has an entirely different reality. Now, Peter could have chosen not to. When Jesus told him to put out to the water for a catch, he could have ignored the voice of Christ. He could have said, you know what? I, I appreciate you know the idea, but um, no, I, I don't think so. Um, I, you know, we're, we're just about done cleaning the nets and it's been a full day and I'm tired. You know, he could have stopped it right there. He could have quenched the spirit right there. But he didn't. Because something in him knew this is not a regular request. And this is not a, this is, this is something that's coming from, this is the voice of, this is the voice of somebody I should listen to, if nothing else, at that point in time. Okay? He goes from one step to the next to the next, and his entire world dramatically changes. So he moved. He shifted because there was a Peter that could have just skipped it and just went right on fishing and stayed a fisherman his entire existence, not gone with Christ. Um, and the case of that, which is recorded, is the story of the rich young ruler. Similar situation, guy comes up to Jesus, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Okay, use the commandments. Um, I've done all these things since I was a kid. What do I still lack? Well, if you... If you want to be perfect, go sell everything that you have, give to the poor, come follow me. It says that he went away sad. Went away sad. Because he had much wealth. He didn't change. He didn't change his loop. He didn't change his reality. He didn't change his experience. He stayed on that same track. He did not move with the open door that was given to him. He did not turn the key and he did not use his free will when God gave him the chance. God gave him the opportunity. And God does that. He honors free will. So here's two cases in Scripture where you see one person turned the key and went through the door who is Christ and the other one did not because he was in a loop and he didn't want to change it. And he had a lot in his own mind in that place. And he didn't want to lose. You know, what does it profit a man? To gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul. What can a man give in exchange for his soul? Okay, so that's the situation. So now in our own lives, you know, you, you can be, there can be the Peter, there can be the rich young ruler. And that one place, just that one thing, there's other things that open and close doors. Reality shifts, reality changes in our world, in our paradigm, in our construct. But just that one where he speaks and we obey, he leads and we follow. That one thing, just that one alone, will change your entire journey for your time on the earth. Just that one thing. If you do nothing else, if you learn nothing else, if you just do that one thing and you follow the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit, it's good enough. You know, He can lead and guide you into all truth. Good enough. But there's more. There's so much more. There's so much more intended and planned and anticipated and given for the followers of Christ Jesus. There's so much more that's there for them. But it comes on his terms. And you have to be willing to make a shift. You have to be willing to make a change. You have to be willing to go with Christ. You have to be willing to forsake all in exchange for that which is real, in exchange for that which is true, in exchange for the kingdom. Now, in the process of giving up all, you actually find that now you've gained all things. But you had to cross from death to life, from the power of Satan unto God. You had to cross from the mind control of the world to the mind controlled by the Spirit of the living God. I'll say that one again. You had to cross from the mind control of the world 
to the mind controlled by the Spirit of the living God, which is the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. You had to cross from one fear-based, top-down hierarchy, um, just predatory system that's built to steal and to kill and to destroy, you had to cross from that into life. And the life that you crossed into is the life that's led by the Spirit of the living God, the life that God has for you, the journey that God has for you, your purpose while you're here on the earth. Because listen, the different people that God had on the earth in history, time past, if you read the scriptures, slaves to kings, the whole range, everything in between. You've got an entire range all over the, it just 1,500 year time span, all kinds of different things taking place. You know, 40 different authors of 66 different books in the scriptures. And then, you know, you've got other, you've got the book of Enoch, you've got the book of Thomas, been getting into that one. You know, you've got some amazing things that God has done. All of that. um, And none of these people had the same experience. None of them had the same experience during their time on the earth. So why do we get upset? Why do you get upset? Your experience is your manifestation of the way that God would lead and guide you through this life and the way that you will trust and follow and respond to the call. But each soul is different. Each journey is unique. You know, just as your fingerprints are unique. Your fingerprints in your hand, on your hand, each hand is unique. Billions of people walk around on the earth Not one fingerprint is the same as somebody else's. Isn't that amazing? Doesn't that just show the genius of God? Now, if God made sure that not a single fingerprint on the earth is the same, why do you think he's going to have you have the same experience as somebody else? He's going to be unique with your fingerprint, but then be cookie cutter with your life. No, your experience is your experience and manifestation of the way that God would lead, design, equip, call you and the way that you, of your free will, have responded to that call. If you've responded to the call, like Peter, then you're going to be with Christ. And even if you, like Peter, in his own experience, Slip off the wagon and then come back and God restore you. That's going to be part of your experience. There's others that started following and they kept going hard all the way. There's some people that started and they they dropped off. And there's others that never began. You know, Jesus talked about that in the parable of the sower. All of that is there. But what will you decide? You know, Joshua asked that question to the children of Israel. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. He asked that question. And it's an important question because free will is engaged. And the enemy wants you to take your free will and your creative power that God has put in you and he wants you to curse your own life. He wants you to tear down your own house with your own hands. He wants you to loathe the gift and the calling of God in you He wants you to feel isolated, though you're not. You're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. But he wants you to feel isolated and alone, misunderstood, um, out there in the wilderness with nobody to hear you. It's not the truth. It's the lie of the devil. But hey, lies are powerful if you take them in. Lies are powerful if you give them credibility. Lies are powerful if you believe them. So don't believe them. Jesus didn't believe them. When the devil came to him and tried the same trick like he did with Eve in the garden, and, you know, the same did God really say, you know, here's Jesus, and he wants to bring doubt. 
into the mind of Christ. If you are the Son of God. If. He knows he's the Son of God. He knows he's the Son of God. Otherwise, he wouldn't be wasting his time with him. If you are the Son of God. Make these, tell these stones to become bread. If you're the Son of God. Throw yourself off the temple. Because doesn't the scripture say, God will command his angels concerning you and you won't strike your foot against the stone? So, if you're the Son of God, then God's got to back you up. So, let's see it. Jesus. Right? If. 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 I think think the devil likes that word. If. Bring doubt. You know. Showed them all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor. All you got to do is just bow down. Just take a knee. <laughs> take a knee, Jesus. Take a knee. All you got to do is take a knee. All the devil wants them to do is take a knee. And I give you all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor. And what is Jesus' response? He responded with the truth of the word. He knew who he was. He dealt with it. He dealt with the temptation. And he dealt with it from the word. He dealt with it from the truth. And he moved on. He moved on into what was going to be the rough road, the, the, the tough path. It's a, it's, the way, is, the way is, is there. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. But boy, that path can be rocky sometimes. And, you know, it you know, it's a, it's a, can be a rough journey. And that's the journey that Jesus went on. All these people would have been just ready at the just the command of the enemy. The command of the enemy. All the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All you got to do is bow down. Play ball, Jesus, and it's all yours. And that's that offer has been there. That offer has been... You know what? That offer has been there in my own life. Several times. Several times and in different ways, through different human agents, um, that offer has come. You know, not all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor, but, you know, <laughs> definitely to be something in the world. But we just got to kind of get rid of one little thing here. We just got to get rid of one little thing. You know, you got to give up your soul. You got to give up um, this Jesus. You got to play ball with the world. You know, for the follower of Christ, that is, it's 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 not even a consideration. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Ezra, Hanani, and Michelle, otherwise, their real names, because when people get trafficked, they like to give you a new name. <laughs> they like to give you a new identity, take away who you once were. Um, but scriptures record them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, because that was part of their journey. Um, well, it records them as both. But in Nebuchadnezzar's uh, push, to get everybody to bow before his the statue that he'd set up in the plain of Dura. Okay? And when, what did Nebuchadnezzar say? When you hear the sound of all these instruments, then, you know, all you got to do is just drop down and worship. And they did a great job at everything else that they did. But they would not bow and would not worship something. They would, thou shalt love the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. They knew the word. You you will not, you will not worship an idol. You will not serve another. 
So even though they were slaves in the natural, they would not serve another. They would not bow. And so when the king brought, pulled them up before him, threatening them with certain death, certain death, guaranteed, you're going to die. You're going to die for what you believe in right now. They're heating the furnace. They're getting it going. They're going to just toss you alive in there. You're going to just roast alive. What do they say? Oh, king, we're not even going to be careful in answering you with regards to this matter. You know, we're not going to mince our words here. We're not going to be political. Just know for yourself that, you know, we're never going to bow to the image that you've set up. Why? Because that is the free will decision in the heart and the choice of every human being on the earth. Even if you're in a position of being a slave in the natural, your spirit still can make a choice. You can still make a choice. And that's the thing the devil does not want. He doesn't want you to make that choice because when you make that choice to follow the living God, now you're out. Now you're out. He can't hold you. Spiritually, he cannot hold you. And so, yes, if he kills the body, but the spirit is free, so he's lost. He's lost, and the Lord has brought home one that is his. And the enemy can't stand that. With all that he has at his disposal for the follower of Christ to just walk right out of here just infuriates him. Because he knows that each follower of Christ that goes on to walk with and be with the, with the Father, to live as Christ and to die as gain, they know that the gain is for that one that dies in Christ, is that one will be with and in the presence of the living God for all eternity, where the enemy once knew and once was and can no longer ever again be, because he's been blocked out. He's been limited. And the enemy knows that his eternal resting place, there is no rest for him, his eternal place is in the lake of fire. His eternal place is separate from God. His eternal place is to never see, never know the face of God again. So for the follower of Christ that slips out of this world and out of the clutches of the world system, it's infuriating for them. Absolutely infuriating. They cannot stand it. Drives them nuts. When you die in Christ... Would to God that we would all have a good death. A good passing. And I shouldn't even say the word death because you've already crossed over. If you walk with Christ, you've already crossed over from death to life. From the power of Satan unto God. You've already transitioned. And in the transition, in that change, you have purpose. You have reason for being. And listen, I know that sometimes it can get frustrating because, you know, you've got so much in your heart to do. But you've also got to understand you've got that enemy of your soul. And he's doing everything that he can to keep you from moving forward in the gifts and the calling and the purpose that God has for you. Because everything that you would do as a follower of Christ would be destructive to the world system. Because Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. So if you're following Jesus, you're destroying the works of the devil. You may not, you may not see or understand exactly how that is happening, but you are if you're being led by the Spirit. Your presence shakes things up, breaks up circuitry, breaks up um, their mind control. Your presence shows that there's another way. Your presence, your existence, shows that somebody doesn't have to bow down <clears throat> to the world. Somebody can, in fact, walk with God, walk with Christ, know the life, know the truth, and there is a way out. 
Your presence messes things up. They don't want that. That's just your presence. Now, what happens when you start doing the things the Father asks for you to do? What happens when you start praying for people and people get healed? What happens when you forgive when people transgress against you? And you forgive and you release and you let go. What happens? It shakes things up. What happens when you bless those that persecute you and you pray for those that spitefully use you? What happens when you love your enemies? You know, what happens? Now, that doesn't mean be stupid, people. <laughs> that doesn't mean put your, you know, just, just, because you're supposed to have knowledge. You're supposed to have wisdom. You're supposed to have understanding. You're supposed to, you know, that we pray for that. We ask for that. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men generously without finding fault. You ask for that. I also ask for the power to be able to do something with what God shows me. Because if you know something, but you don't have the power to be able to act on what you know, what good is it? You know, you've got to be able to also have the power and the platform to be able to do something with what God shows you. Otherwise, it's, it'll drive you nuts. But, yeah, you want to do something with what God shows you. And scriptures say, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So there's no reason for you to perish before your time, before God's destined time for you. There's no reason for you to live um, in the entrapments of the world when God has intended and planned and purposed for you to be in something else. There's no reason for it, but a lot of people do it. Sometimes, you know, I think we do certain things partly because we, we've, we don't know was actually available to us in Christ. Sometimes I think it's because we don't, we, we maybe we do know, but we don't, we don't then access it, we don't move on it. You know, sometimes, I mean, yeah, like we do this with so many things in our life. We know that there's, you know, certain foods are good for us, certain foods are bad for us, but what do we do with that information? Do we eat the stuff that's good for us and shun the stuff that's bad for us? No. Nope. I mean, we do sometimes, a lot of times, but we also slip. You know, it's this is an incredible time, though, because the Spirit of God will quicken you and empower you to do the things you need to do. And everything's shifting, everything's changing. You know, as, as, as we talked about, you know, reality loops shifting. Well, there's, there are, it's not a timeline, brothers and sisters. It's not a timeline. You know, you are right now a cumulative, um, you, you are, you are a, <clears throat> a present reflection of who you are. You know, it's not your past. It's just the accumulation of who you have been in the present. There is no time. There's just right now. And if you know that, okay, then what are you going to do right now? Are you going to walk with God right now? Because tomorrow doesn't come. Are you going to trust God right now? Because tomorrow doesn't come. Are you going to believe and what it is that God gives you to do, knowing that that's your assignment, your role, your responsibility. You know, when, when, when God spoke to us about doing 20 on 20 and the Human 2020 initiative, this, that we didn't have... We, that push was... Just something that God led us into. I mean, very. There's a lot of parallels, a lot of parallels to you know Moses and the Exodus, and a big part of that is like, okay, it's just 
you know, here's your stick. Okay, now go do this. And that's God's way. Why? Because no person can take the credit for what it is that God does. I think God loves to do it like that because then when people go back, it it is no person. It's God. It's the very hand and the finger of God. The only thing that we can do is have a willingness in ourselves to follow the leading and the guiding of the Spirit. Lord, your way, not mine, every day, every moment. Lord, your decision, your choice, your direction, your leading, your guiding, your purpose, your will, your plan, please. I'll do it, and then whatever everything else is, that's what it is. But I'm just going to do your will. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to let you lead and guide me into all truth. Lord, your will be done in Jesus' name. That's what you want. Now, what that ended up manifesting into in Moses' own life at the age of 80 was an exceptional power encounter with the leader of Egypt. Um, Tremendous miracles, clashes, in the process of God liberating his people. And then him leaving that land with well over a million people. I, I mean, I've read different accounts of different numbers, but just a lot of people that left Egypt, walked out of that world system, that slave system, and went out. God brought them out. Now, you know, Moses could have chosen to avoid it. He could have tried to avoid the will of God. You know, Jonah Jonah tried to avoid the will of God. I mean, this is, listen, when you read the scriptures, if you give, if you don't just read through it really fast, if you take a little time and actually think about it, you start to see the humanity of all these different characters, all these different people. You know, why did Jonah run the other way when God spoke to him and said, I want you to go to Nineveh? Why? Why did he run the other way? You know, what's going on with that? And then, to turn around, the, the way God spoke to him, the way God ministered to him, you know, the way that he orchestrated the natural circumstance to get him thrown out of the boat, to get him swallowed by a fish, to get him spit up on land so he could do the thing he was told to do. Would to God that we could avoid all of that and just go direct. God loves us. But He's also not obligated to uh, make sure that we're completely comfortable with everything. That we're okay with everything. That it all meets our approval. No, He's the King. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. We are His servants. We're His subjects. We're His sons. We're His daughters. But he's the Lord. He's over it all. It's his call, his choice, his will, his plan, his purpose, his kingdom come, his will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. That's what you want. You don't want the illusion. You don't want... uh, Listen, if you, you can have the illusion... But you're just going to wake up to a horrible reality that you missed it. If you, if you have the illusion and you choose the illusion, the only reality that's waiting for you is the true fact that you missed it. What you want is what's real. And the only thing that's real is in Christ Jesus. Because He is the truth. So that's the only way that you're going to know the truth. It's the only way that you're going to be free. And... You know, we, we as you start walking out that freedom, you're going to take some hits. As you start walking out that freedom, you're going to take some attacks of the enemy. All those things are going to be part and parcel of the course, part and parcel of the journey. But you know what the scriptures say? Consider it pure joy when you pay when you face 
persecutions and trials of all kinds because you know that the testing of your faith builds perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope, and hope does not disappoint. Yeah, yeah I can hear some of you guys say easier said than done. You know what? It's, it's in, the, in our humanity, sure. But in the spirit, you, we get it. In the Spirit, we get it. And that's why we want to be in the Spirit. We want to walk in the Spirit. We want to walk in a state of prayer. We want to walk in that which is real and that which is true. We want to walk in, in with, with the Father. You want that. Because listen, the world has nothing to offer. Everything in the world is empty. All of it's empty. But God will accomplish His plan and purpose in our lives. Listen, guys, I'm excited. I'm excited for what God is doing. I'm excited for God's plan and purpose for our lives. I'm excited for God's plan and purpose for your life, for everything that's on the horizon. And if you'll trust Him, if you'll trust Him, you're going to see the manifestation you're going to see the power and the plan and the purpose of God coming to full fruition in you. But you got to trust Him. If you... Because why? And what thing you got to trust? He said, I came that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So if you trust Him, you trust that He's got the very best for you. That He's got the abundant life for you. That He's got the full life for you. That he, what he has and what he intends for you is that which is above, beyond anything that you could expect, ask, think, all of that's there in him. So if you are going to trust him, you're going to see the manifestation of his plan and purpose. So go with him. Trust him. And know that he that began a good work in you is going to carry it on to completion. Pray. Know who you are in Christ. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Don't let those lies sit. When the enemy brings his ifs, you come back with, you know, this is what God says. This is the truth. You know, the scriptures say this. Jesus said this. This is God's plan and purpose over my life. You're, you know, get behind me, Satan. Go with that. Father God, in Jesus' name, I bless my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus right now. I bless them, Father, with health and strength and every resource they need to carry out your plan and purpose for them. I pray for them right now in Jesus' name. Strengthen them, Lord. Be with them. Bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Drop us an email, faithmix at gmail.com. We always love to hear from you guys. Um, We look forward just to so many things on the horizon. Keep praying. Keep praying. 20 on 20 is coming up in the near future. We love that time and love the chance to get together. But keep praying. Pray one for another. Um, Stay on the right track because God is doing some amazing things. And just, you know, go for it. Go for it. And know that we love you guys and we're cheering for you. We're praying for you. God bless you. We'll talk to you again sometime soon. Faithmix at gmail.com. You can reach us there. Um, God bless you. Talk to you sometime soon. All right, God bless you. Bye.